Howdy, my name is Craig Sufall, and I'm an associate professor here in the Department of Poultry Science. I'm also the collegiate poultry judging coach. And so today I wanted to uh, talk to you about poultry judging and give you a little introduction to what poultry judging is all about. So uh, many of you may already be very experienced in poultry judging. Uh, if you've participated in FFA contest or even some of our 4-H contests here in Texas. Uh, but uh, you may not be familiar with all aspects of poultry judging, or if you're a beginner, you might really uh, just be curious about what this is all about. Uh, so why should you engage in, po in poultry judging? Um, I think it's a very uh, great opportunity to learn some very important life skills. Um, we, in poultry judging, we specialize in the evaluation of live birds, uh, eggs, and poultry products. So there are a lot of different aspects uh, are covered. Uh, in addition to working with poultry and poultry products, you also learn very important skills like decision making. Um, you have to, in poultry judging, look at what's presented in front of you and make a quick decision. And that's a very important skill to learn how to do uh, as a young person. Uh, it also teaches you to work very quickly under pressure. All poultry contests uh, have a time limit that you're allowed uh, per class to uh, make your decisions and, and determine your grades. And so it, it teaches you to work very quickly under pressure um, so that you can uh, make those accurate and quick decisions. So those are very important life skills to learn and poultry judging can be a great way uh, to hone those skills. Um, in addition, um, it's a great way to win some awards and scholarships and we all enjoy that. Um, and most importantly for me, it's just fun. Uh, we really uh, have a lot of fun with our poultry judging team here at Texas A&M University, and we have a lot of fun putting on all the contests that many of the young people uh, come to campus to participate in. Um, poultry uh, competitions are always uh, uh, graded on an individual basis, so you can compete as a single person, uh, but you can also compete as a team. And so you can win awards uh, in both aspects at the same contest uh, if you and your team all perform very well. Uh, most contests are, are not going to always be located in your backyard, so it gives you a great opportunity to travel to some of the contests. Uh, some of the contests, like the national ones, are even out of state, so you get to travel out of state, so that can be very fun, uh, traveling to all the different contests. Um, and it's always a great opportunity to meet new people and uh, make new friends. Now, there are many different opportunities uh, for you to participate in poultry judging contests. Uh, here in Texas, we have many invitational contests that are open to both 4-H and FFA members um, at the local level, um, at some of the major livestock shows like Houston and San Antonio. Um, and here on campus, each spring, we also host our Kruger Memorial Invitational Contest uh, in honor of one of our late uh, collegiate judging coaches and professors, uh, Dr. Willie Kruger. Um, he was my judging coach, and so it's always a lot of fun for us to, to host that competition uh, here each spring. And that's open uh, to all 4-H and FFA members. Uh, on the 4-H uh, level, uh, we have our state 4-H roundup contest each June. Um, and the winner, winning team of that contest um, can also move on to the national 4-H uh, contest that's held each year. Uh, on the FFA level, um, the FFA organization has both area, state, uh, contest uh, here in Texas, and then our state winner can also uh, move on to the national contest. So lots of opportunities uh, to participate in many contests throughout the year. Um, in addition, uh, once you've really honed your uh, poultry judging skills, um, someday you might even uh, be able to become a poultry uh, judge um, to help judge some of our youth livestock shows here in Texas. And of course, that's also a lot of fun to get to work uh, with the livestock shows and all of the youth uh, at those events. So every poultry judging contest can be broke down into kind of three broad categories. Um, those categories are live bird evaluation, egg grading, and evaluation of poultry products. So let's start with live birds. With live birds, um, in the FFA contest, we have what we call market broilers. Basically, um, these are uh, being judged very similar like we do for the livestock shows here in Texas, um, where you're placing the birds based on breast meat yield. So the bird with the most breast meat will place highest uh, and then on down the line. Um, and again, this is a very important skill to learn um, because in the poultry industry, the evaluation of broiler growth and performance throughout the growing cycle is extremely important to know how our birds are growing. Um, and it's also very important to determine 
how we may alter our management or nutritional programs in order to achieve uh, maximum growth and yield of those birds. So that's very important in the commercial poultry industry. Uh, it's important to the poultry research that we do here at Texas A&M. And of course, it has important implications uh, to livestock uh, shows here in Texas. So a very, very important skill to learn uh, in poultry judging. The next category would be laying hens for egg production. Um, again, this is a very important class. And so we have it included in all of the contests, all the way from 4-H through the collegiate contest um, that our students participate in. And again, in this class, you're going to be uh, evaluating the hens and judging which hen has laid the most eggs thus far uh, in her life um, based on her handling characteristics uh, and pigmentation of the bird. And so these are very important skills to learn uh, in the commercial egg industry. It's very important for us to know which hens are producing well um, so that we can manage the birds correctly uh, to achieve maximum egg production. Uh, it's very also important uh, in our research programs to evaluate are we uh, doing the management and uh, nutritional programs appropriate for those hens to maximize production. So again, a very important life skill uh, to learn here in poultry judging. In our collegiate contest, we also have a class where we judge uh, laying hen pullets. Now, a pullet, if you're not familiar with that term, is a young female bird that has not yet begun to lay eggs. All right, so she's not yet laying eggs, but we evaluate those pullets on their future potential to produce eggs. Uh, so in this class, we will focus on body conformation. Those birds that have the best body conformation we predict will be the best egg layers. And so again, very important impacts uh, to the commercial egg production uh, industry. Um, so that we can uh, use this skill to be able to monitor pullet growth and development so we know how our birds are, pro are, are progressing uh, towards maturity so they can be good layers. Um, and it's also very important uh, when we're establishing breeding flocks uh, to produce the next generation of laying hens so we next know so we know next uh, generation will also have the correct confirmation that we want uh, for egg production. Um, and in the collegiate contest, we also have another division uh, called breeding birds, where we um, determine which birds, uh, again, these are going to be young birds, uh, we predict will be the best breeders uh, to produce both broiler and turkey uh, meat birds. Uh, and so in this uh, particular class, you would be evaluating both the conformation of the bird, so in other words, how uh, good the skeleton development is, but also the amount of fleshing on that skeleton to determine the, which birds would give us the best meat yield in the offspring uh, from those breeders. And again, so when we're developing those commercial breeds, these are very important uh, evaluation skills to have, um, and it uh, allows us to con con continually improve the genetics uh, of our meat producing birds. The next part of any poultry judging contest is egg grading. Um, and because this is so important uh, to, to our egg production systems, uh, everybody uh, eats eggs, whether you know it or not, because all of our baked goods we love to eat contain eggs. So you probably eat a lot more eggs than you realize. And the ability to grade the eggs, to properly market them, uh, is a very, very important skill to know how to do. Now, there's two parts to egg grading. Uh, first, there's interior grade quality, and there's also exterior grade quality. And again, these uh, classes are included in all of the contests, all the way from 4-H through collegiate levels. Now, again, the very important impacts to, uh, to meeting the marketing and, and uh, regulations set forth uh, by the government for marketing of eggs. Um, so when you see that carton and it says grade A on it, what does that mean? And that's what you'll learn when you learn how to grade eggs. You'll learn what grade A and grade B uh, means. Um, it also has very important food safety ramifications. Um, eggs that are excessively dirty uh, might contain a lot of bacteria on the shell. Um, eggs that are broken might allow bacteria to get inside the egg and contaminate uh, the product that we want to eat. Um, so it also has very important food safety ramifications. Um, and of course, there are a lot of career opportunities uh, with knowing how to grade eggs, all the way from sales and marketing uh, through regulations. Um, inspectors at the federal, state, and local health levels all have to know how to uh, grade eggs in order to make sure that producers and retailers are compliant with all of the regulations. So again, you can see here in these two pictures, 
U.S. consumers are used to a set of eggs that are uniform in shape. They're uniform in size, color. They're nice and clean, um, very appealing to the consumer, and uh, gives, gives the consumer a very high-quality product um, and, of course, meets all of the regulatory standards. Versus the carton on the other side, where we have dirty eggs, broken eggs, lots of different size eggs, um, is not going to be very appealing to the consumer and will probably not meet um, the standards of USDA grade. Um, and so, uh, again, uh, understanding how to grade eggs is a very important skill if you're going to someday ever sell eggs or be involved in the marketing or retail of eggs. So in interior egg grading, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate the quality of the egg without breaking it. We're going to evaluate the internal quality of the egg um, by using what's called a candling light. So we're going to use a bright light to shine into the internal part of the egg um, and assess the quality of the egg by looking at the size of the air cell located in the large end of the egg. And you'll be grading the eggs as double A, A, or, or B uh, are our uh, USDA grades that are acceptable. If it doesn't meet those standards, then it's called a loss, or sometimes uh, the term is also a reject. In other words, an egg that could not meet USDA standards and has to be uh, discarded. For exterior quality, uh, again, we'll be applying the USDA standards, but this time it'll be for the exterior of the shell, looking at the visual uh, appearance and structure uh, of the shell. And of course, with, with that, there'll be two grades that are acceptable, either an A or a B. If it doesn't meet the A or B standards, then you would classify it as a no grade uh, or a reject uh, egg. In the FFA contest, uh, you also have to identify the factors uh, associated with the grade you assign to the egg. Okay, so for example, an egg that is broken or excessively dirty would get a no grade because we do not want those kind of eggs in our cartons for retail sale. Whereas eggs that just have other imperfections such as shape or calcium deposits, ridges, thin spots, uh, or some slight stains would still be considered a marketable egg but would now be graded down to a B. All right, so those are the uh, examples of, of a few things you might uh, see uh, in the FFA contest uh, when it comes to exterior egg grading. Now one other evaluation of eggs that we do in poultry judging is what we call broken out eggs. Now we do this at the 4-H national contest and we do it in our collegiate um, contest. And again what we're doing here is we're evaluating the internal quality of the egg but this time we're evaluating it when that egg has been broken out onto a plate. Um, and what that does is it allows us to observe other internal characteristics of the egg that might not be able to be seen with a candling light, such as albumin quality. Uh, albumin quality uh, is a very important marker of egg quality because it relates to the functionality of that egg in baked goods, such as cakes uh, and breads. Um, and so, again, the implications of this skill um, are that we could evaluate the internal quality of eggs based on a variety of factors. Um, you know, hen age, hen nutrition, how we handle and store the eggs can all impact the quality of the egg. And we might not be able to necessarily tell that just by measuring the size of the air cell with a candling light, but when we break that out onto a plate, we would be able to see those different quality characteristics uh, of that egg. And so it's, it has many implications uh, to marketing and sales and, and utilization of eggs and food products and also when we conduct egg quality research to be able to evaluate um, the things that we're doing to the eggs, how it impacts the quality of those eggs. And then of course the last category uh, in any contest would be poultry products. And the, so the three parts uh, in poultry products would be carcass grading, parts identification, or further processed poultry meat products. So carcass grading, again, is a very, very important skill. Uh, it's very important to how we market and sell uh, poultry products uh, here in the United States and around the world. Um, again, you'll be, just like with eggs, you'll be grading chicken and turkey carcasses according to USDA standards. All right, and so our USDA acceptable standards would be A, B, or C. Uh, if it doesn't meet those standards, then it would be deemed a no grade. In other words, a carcass that could not be put into retail sale. Um, because it doesn't meet USDA standards. Um, again, this has a lot of implications to how we market poultry. Uh, many, many different career possibly uh, opportunities there, all the way from sales and marketing 
through uh, federal and state inspection services uh, of poultry uh, carcasses. So what does it mean by grade A? When you buy uh, a pack, a whole chicken, and it's got the little grade A symbol there on the uh, package, what does that really mean? All right, what that means is that basically that carcass uh, is, is, is of high quality. Um, there's no broken bones. There are very few imperfections. Uh, the, the carcass uh, is uh, essentially uh, very uh, free of any defects. All right, that's what a grade A carcass uh, means. It doesn't really mean has anything to do with taste or flavor or texture. It means how does that carcass look and are all the parts there uh, in intact. All right, um, if we start to see things like uh, tears in the skin, um, that would downgrade the carcass maybe to a B. Or if we had missing parts, again, that would be an example of a B grade carcass, so not a full A grade perfect carcass. Another example might be if we had some broken bones that were protruding through the skin. Now this would be, according to USD standards, a grade C. Or if we had significant parts of the carcass missing, uh, significant meaty parts such as this breast meat removed um, by trimming, um, that would be considered a no-grade carcass. So these are all the things, all the rules that you'll have to learn. These are only a few examples um, in learning how to grade carcasses. And again, this is a very, very important skill uh, to learn how to do. In the FFA contest and the 4-H contest, we have another category called uh, parts identification. So in other words, when that carcass has been uh, cut into pieces, can you identify the various retail cuts that could possibly come uh, from that carcass? And of course, many of us uh, probably are very familiar with cut up chicken that we would buy at the grocery store, right? You'd have different breasts and drumsticks and wings and all types of different um, possibilities um, that we could buy uh, in a retail counter. Um, and again, so this has very important ramifications uh, in the poultry industry of knowing how we do this, uh, how we market these products. Um, and then someday, maybe even if you get into the culinary arts and become a chef, you have to understand the difference between a breast and a drumstick and a thigh if you're going to uh, be able to uh, produce the product that the consumer wants uh, in, that, in that scenario. Um, and again, the way to really learn these different parts is to just study the anatomy of the carcass, study the anatomy of the bird. All right, so if we took the uh, bird and we cut it in half and removed half the breast, we would have a split breast. If we cut the wing off, then that wing could be divided into two parts and so on and so on. So it's very simple to learn all of these parts uh, once you understand the anatomy of the bird and how those different parts are removed from a whole carcass. So get a chicken, get a knife and start learning how to cut up a chicken. It's a very important skill to learn and it'll make it very easy for you to learn all the different cuts that are possible. Again, these are only a very few here on the slide, um, but there's uh, get out your FFA manual and start studying those parts because there's a whole bunch more to learn. And then the last part uh, of the of a uh, FFA poultry judging contest uh, would be evaluating further processed poultry meat products. Again, a lot of the poultry marketed today in the United States are sold as further processed products. So things like nuggets and patties and wings, um, all those, um, you know, uh, fast food, finger type foods that we all love to, to eat on um, when we watch football and stuff like that. Um, again, uh, there's a lot of more information than we can talk about today. So see the FFA manual for all the criteria associated with this class. Um, there's two parts to this to this part of it. There's the boneless and the bone-in products. Um, and again, this has very important implications to, uh, for possible career opportunities in the poultry industry. Um, when these products are being produced, there have to be people who assure the quality of that product and it meets the standards uh, that is set forth both by the producer and by the customer. Um, so that's a very important uh, aspect of, of this skill. Um, and of course, it's also very important because it adds value to the product. Um, and so uh, those are very important skills to learn in evaluating uh, these types of products. Um, in the boneless division, you'll be evaluating nuggets, patties, and tenders, or sometimes called uh, breast strips. Um, a couple examples here would be uh, that you'd be looking for would be broken products, uh, maybe discolored, um, incomplete coating where the meat is not completely covered by the, the breading or the coating of the product, or even an inconsistent size of the product. 
Um, again, these are just a few examples of the possibilities um, that you might look for as defects in these products that are presented in this class of the contest. And of course, in the bone-in products, um, such as wings, drums, thighs, or, or breast, um, you'll be looking for other defects um, such as foreign material. Hope you can see there's a little feather stuck to that one. Um, so that would definitely be something we don't want in the product. Um, miscut would be if the uh, wing was cut through the bone and not actually where it's supposed to be cut, which is in between the joint of the wing bones, um, or if there wasn't complete coating. So these are, again, just a few of the examples um, that you might be looking for uh, with this particular class. So that kind of wraps up covering the, uh, the different things you might learn and experience in poultry judging. I hope, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this brief overview, um, and we hope to see you at the next uh, judging contest. Thank you for your attention, and gig em.